Let's turn happy left. Hello, viewers. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a good racing sim every now and again, especially with a decent steering wheel setup. But there's no denying that a simulation really needs you to focus. Otherwise, things can be a bit. Shit. Shit. We've been awarded a time penalty. <laughs> I didn't need that bumper, it was slowing me down. You've been awarded a time penalty. Ah! Oh, shit. Damping? How damp should I be? We've been awarded a time penalty. Oh! Ow. Uh. Okay, this is Jeff. I need you to stop cutting the corners. If you keep it up, the stewards will award you a penalty. Oh, f off, Jeff. There's no doubt that when you get in the zone, racing sims are fantastic. But sometimes you don't want flags and rules. You don't need realistic damage and you couldn't give a shit which company supplies your spark plugs. Sometimes you just need a good old fashioned arcade racer. And here are five that I'd recommend that you probably aren't playing. Does anyone have any paracetamol? Anyone? When I heard that some of the developers behind PlayStation Racers, Drive Club and Motorstorm were making the next Dirt game, it instantly went to the top of my most wanted list. After all, Drive Club in particular had, and still has, some of the finest courses you can drive in video games. When Dirt 5 released in November 2020, there was some disappointment that not everything had worked, but this is still a great arcade racer, especially when taking on the entire career mode with up to four players in an all too rare split screen mode. Dirt 5 looks like an explosion in a 90s shell suit factory, with bright brash colours splashed across the menus and all over the bodywork of a decent selection of vehicles. In many ways the game feels like a modern day Sega rally. The handling is very arcade, simple and forgiving with an enjoyable change in grip depending on the road surface. Throughout a nicely varied career mode you'll drive everywhere from snowy Nepal to sun-bleached Arizona via Norway, Greece, Italy, South Africa, the tropical forests of Brazil, China and more. There are sweeping bends to hold drifts in the mud, a pleasing sense of verticality and scale and numerous Dukes of Hazard style jumps. Many of the tracks look even better through their day-night cycles or under heavy rain or snow and this is all set to another of Codemasters now famously great licensed soundtracks. But as I said, it's not all good news. The Pathfinder mode, which is an excellent idea featuring point-to-point -point races with alternate routes and obstacles, has its own physics, apparently based on the moon landing. It's all far too excitable and ruins what should be a decent change of pace. I'd also argue that the Gymkhana events are pretty dull and too finicky, with limited and uninteresting ways to score. Despite repeated attempts to get into the flow with these, I often find myself doing the bare minimum just to progress if I can't ignore the event altogether. But the pros far outweigh the cons in this package, and the opportunity to play in four player split screen for the entire career is something I never really expected to see in a modern game, and we need to see more of it. Of course online racing is available, and with the game being a much cheaper proposition these days, if not entirely free on certain subscriptions, then the lobby numbers are often there for a decent race. The official Formula 1 and WRC games are brilliant in their own right, but I hope that Codemasters new parent company EA realise there's still a place for arcade fun alongside them, and that this isn't the last we see of the Dirt series. Today we have a few extremely powerful machines on one of the craziest race courses in the country. Looks like everyone's ready for the show, so let's get ready for large doses of high octane entertainment. If Formula One is your sharp suited erudite university graduate with money to burn, then monster truck racing is a toothless cross eyed moron barely out of prison long enough to marry its own sister. And it's all the better for it. I'm amazed there aren't more decent monster truck games. 
racing, tricks, wanton destruction. It's perfect fodder for a video game, and yet, aside from the distinctly average Monster Jam series, there isn't really anyone having a go at the discipline. Luckily, our Polish friends at Teon have arrived with a skip of popcorn and enough beer to kill a horse, and they've got a decent game on their hands once again. It might be that monster trucks are notoriously unstable and difficult to drive that puts a lot of developers off. On the one hand you have this hulking great machine that weighs several tons, and yet all that weight is floating around on four massive pillows of air, while being vastly overpowered by an outrageous engine that's determined to make you do backflips, like one of those curiously popular mechanical dog toys from the 80s. How do you balance the physics? To their credit, Taeon seems to have it largely figured out in Monster Truck Championship. There's a nice weighty feel to the handling with just the right amount of nervous edge to guard against complacency and making things dull. You can pull off some lengthy drifts in races but you have to earn them with careful use of the throttle and braking. If you feel yourself over or under steering there's a chance to right things again with the independently controlled rear wheels. The handling is good fun and that's always the first major hurdle in a racing game. The career mode is fairly varied and competitive, mixing standard circuit racing with simplistic trick and destruction events, ploughing through motorhomes and portable toilets to rack up the best score. The one-on-one -on -one drag races are also better than they sound, as you tackle an opponent on mini racecourses three times in quick succession to come out on top. There's a wide variety of customization options and upgrades. You can drive a giant dog if you want to, and why wouldn't you? For some, the game might go stale more quickly than you'd like, as it does show everything in its hand fairly early on, and there's only so much variety in the tracks and stadia. Perhaps a riff on some of Monster Jam's more outlandish design could have helped complement the real-world locations on offer here. And sadly, there are no split-screen modes at all, and it's extremely rare that you'll find anyone else in plaid chewing an ear of corn to play online with. Monster Truck Championship is probably best enjoyed when you have your own me time with Kenny Rogers playing in the background as you drunkenly cry over your picture with Jerry Springer. In many ways, hotshot racing is arcade in its purest form, taking you back to Ridge Racer, Virtua Racing in Daytona USA in the mid-90s. In fact, this game is so authentic, you could build four life-size racing car cabins in your front room side by side and charge people a quid for every go. Your friends will love it, and it could be just the excuse you need to start that difficult conversation you've been putting off about ending your loveless marriage. But just before you do move out and begin a campaign of hate on social media, I recommend that you at least try the fantastic, buttery smooth 60 frames per second racing on offer here, especially the split-screen multiplayer. Hotshot Racing keeps it simple. Choose a driver from one of several countries across the world, then select one of their four vehicles, each with different stats for acceleration, speed and drifting, tailored to your preferred racing style and the tournament you want to enter. The graphics and the catchy soundtrack are a love letter to Sega, so much so that the developer might have got a letter back from a slightly less amorous lawyer if the game was any closer to the Japanese devs 90s output. The drifting here is particularly good with the right car and there are certain tracks where you can screech around sideways continuously for practically half a lap. This also helps you accumulate boost which you can use to power forward into the next tyre shredding turn. Aside from single races and tournaments there's a cops and robbers mode which sounds like a great idea on paper but in reality the robbers have far too much vehicle health and you rarely catch even one of them before your time is up. There's Drive or Explode, where you have to keep your speed up, or guess what? And another mode that lets you drop explosive barrels in the path of your rivals, as you avoid those that are being dropped by everybody else. Again, nice idea, but the races are too short to have any impact, and you soon lose interest. Hotshot Racing is a short and simple package, but one that earns your attention with its enjoyable handling, and, although I'm not actually showing it to you here, slick and complicated split-screen multiplayer. It's a great nostalgia hit for gamers of a certain vintage and perfect if you just want a few easy post-pub games. Just remember that your now ex-wife has changed the locks when you get home. Here, the gravitational forces are extreme. The darkness almost impenetrable. This is the ultimate test for Red Out pilots. 
Even though it's been dormant for several years now, unless you count the bizarrely named mobile entry Wipeout Merge, a certain once revolutionary series that helped to shift millions of original PlayStations in the mid-90s still casts a long shadow over anyone wanting to race without wheels. You can't fault the marketing. Wipeout almost single-handedly dragged video games out of their traditional habitat of the bedroom and into front rooms, where adults were. It had licensed music by the Chemical Brothers Leftfield and Orbital, who you'd heard of if you were cool, and the capital E in the title could have been a drugs reference. Ooh. The media lapped it up good and bad and the legend was born. These days video games have to try a lot harder to bait the tabloids of course, although I really can't wait to see what Rockstar chides with GTA 6, but I digress. Redout 2 is the unsurprisingly named sequel to Redout, an anti-grav game that everyone seems to be ignoring. As you can see, it looks fantastic. It's as smooth as it is blisteringly fast, never dropping one of its 60 frames per second on PC and new-gen consoles, no matter the graphical detail or the number of races on screen with you. For my money, the handling is better here than in any of the Wipeout games. In my experience, you spend far less time clattering off the walls in Redout 2, which is also a testament to some excellent track design that recognises the speed you'll be travelling at and tries not to impede that with too many wholly inappropriate hairpins. There are a wide variety of tracks on offer, all of which are a really good length, twisting through volcanoes, around the pyramids of Egypt or across the surface of the moon. And just look at the jumps. The racing can be absolutely thrilling when you nail your line. Redout 2 reminded me of F-Zero GX on the GameCube at times, in the best possible way, and if you are a Nintendo-only gamer, can I take a minute to fully recommend Fast Racing Neo, which is also a brilliant anti-grav racer with four-player split-screen. I actually still play the original version on the Wii U. Yes, I'm one of the three people who bought that system. I wasn't even drunk. I don't think. The campaign mode in Redout 2 does linger a bit too long on the same tracks at times, even though the game has quite a few to offer overall. But the steady stream of upgrades, cosmetics, and two slices of regularly discounted DLC with new tracks does freshen things up a bit. There's also a fair chunk of customization to be done, making sure you've got the correct tip for your flaps. Unfortunately, there's no local multiplayer, and the online lobbies aren't seeing many players these days, based on my research, so this is another one of those games best enjoyed solo as a palate cleanser between sessions of whatever narrative-driven open world day you're playing at the time. And when Redout 2 can be picked up for just a few coins, if it's not completely free on your choice of gaming subscription, it's a low-risk proposition that's definitely worth a look. Although I don't generally list the entries in these Five Things videos in any particular order, I have to admit that Circuit Superstars is my top choice for arcade races at the moment, and it's the one game here that I'd always hoped would have the most longevity. It's rare that I scour the internet for updates for a particular game on a daily basis, but such has been my desire to find someone making a true contender to the 16-bit Micro Machines crown for the last, well, 30 years, that that's exactly what I was doing since this game was first announced. Developed by a tiny indie outfit, Original Fire Games, Circuit Superstars is a deceptively nuanced top-down racer, allowing for up to four players locally in split-screen, 12 online, or combinations of both, to race a variety of cars and trucks across the dirt and tarmac of numerous, mostly excellent little tracks. Don't let the cutesy exterior fool you. While the handling is perfectly accessible, it's been designed to grip and flow more like a real-world car would, albeit one that's been in the tumble dryer for too long. And races can be feisty. You'll need to consider damage, tyre wear and fuel consumption, unless you turn those features off, with the latter two being of particular importance in races longer than seven or eight laps, as here's where your pit stop strategy comes into play. When you're low on juice or smoking from your enthusiastic cornering, or if you just want to get the jump on the field, you pull into the pit lane to watch your mini crew scamper around, changing your tyres, repairing damage and fueling you up. You can pull away again early if you want to drive light, 
but just make sure you've got enough fuel in the tank so you don't suffer the embarrassment of a slow crawl home, being overtaken by everyone you had been beating. Circuit Superstars emerged from early access onto console with a few teething issues, most notably the online racing, which at one stage was glitching everywhere. I'm pleased to say that the netcode is now largely flawless, with smooth races no matter how many of you are crashing through the corners at the same time. There has been one chunk of Top Gear inspired DLC since launch, featuring caravan racing, obstacle courses and the ridiculously unstable three wheelers that Jeremy Clarkson took so much pleasure in crashing. But it would be good to see some more track variety in future, perhaps with a few more trackside features, undulation or at least a change in the samey colour palette that might help distinguish one track from another. And talking of the future, the developers have recently released a karting game into early access using many of the core assets, tracks and handling model from Circuit Superstars tweaked for a chase cam perspective. The aptly named Karting Superstars looks like a lot of fun in the videos that have been doing the rounds online and if it does a bit of business Original Fire Games may release a console version alongside developing some kind of direct sequel to Circuit Superstars. In the meantime let's enjoy what we have today which is one of the most joyful, accessible, single or multiplayer arcade races available. At its best it's right up there with the random swear word generator that is Micro Machines and I'm going to be watching everything that this talented little development team does very closely. So there you have my picks for some instant racing gratification. Are you playing these games? What arcade races aren't we talking about that you know to be great? Feel free to burn some rubber with me in the comments section below and I'll be back with more gaming news, reviews and top 5s very soon.